All right, modeling motion with matrices. Today we will be talking about matrices and how to model the motion with them. Okay, so uh, basically modeling the motion is just working with, I mean this idea comes from computer animation. It's just uh, matrices are just uh, data points, uh, collections of information and enable to do all kinds of complex computer graphics. Uh, you do need to know how to manipulate the uh, matrices of information. So, in other words, like the voice or the the motion capture, all that stuff. Okay. All right. Some words we need to know. Uh, uh, the pre-image is going to be the image before the translation, and then after the translation, it's just going to be the image. So as long as we've got that down, we should be good to go. Okay, uh, the main point that we do need to know is we do need to know that there are several translation matrices that help make our job a whole lot easier. Okay, so if you need to reflect over the y-axis, no, sorry, x-axis, I always start with that one first apparently. Okay, if you need to reflect over the x-axis, you're going to be using this matrix on the matrix you have, and it's going to be a variation thereof. Okay, so it's going to be 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Okay, and what that is essentially doing is that's taking every point in your uh, matrix that has been lined up according to your image on your coordinate plane uh, and it's changing the y coordinate to negative but it's keeping the x coordinate positive so that's an interesting fact of that and so you would multiply by this axis okay now if you wanted to reflect over y axis okay you would use a different matrix Okay, now if you're reflecting over the y-axis, you want to make all the x's negative. So it'd be negative 1, 0, 0, and 1. And you would want to keep the same y-coordinates. Okay? And if you wanted to reflect, well, reflect over y equals x line, Okay, you would use this matrix, which would be, you're just wanting to switch the X's and the Y's. Okay, so those ones are pretty simple to work with. Okay, now if you wanted to do some rotations. And this is counterclockwise. Okay, you would use this matrix. Uh, zero, negative one, one, zero. Okay, and if you wanted to do 180 degrees, you would use this matrix and this is once again counterclockwise with respect to the origin if you had now if we get to more complex stuff and we're going rotating around something other than the origin then we need to start talking about that okay those are going to be some different formulas so this is negative one zero zero negative one and if you want to go 270 or this would be 90 degrees clockwise which would technically make this 270 clockwise or 90 degrees counterclockwise it's totally up to you how you want to say it some of you guys are probably asking well why don't we have 180 degrees clockwise 180 degrees clockwise is the same as 180 degrees counterclockwise, so it's going to be the same thing. So 0, 1, negative 1, 
zero. Okay, as long as you follow those ones, you should be pretty good on getting your pre-image to your post image. Uh, now, if you did want to increase or decrease the size of an object, you would use dilation. Okay, and if it's a if dilation, if the scalar is greater than one, it is an enlargement. Okay, and if the scalar is less than one, it is a shrink. Okay. All right, but that's pretty much it for that unit. Let's see, did I cover everything? Uh, take your time when you're doing your transformations in the coordinate plane. So please just seriously, just take your time, okay? All right, thank you guys. Have a great day.